Okay, so today we have a very short lesson. We're going to be talking about bar graphs, pictographs, circle graphs, and line graphs. So, all the graphs. Alrighty, so let's start at the top. Um, again, all this, I, don't, I just don't like reading from the textbook, uh, but we will talk about the, the, the two pictures I snipped. And then I guess I'll go ahead and snip example one real fast and put it on the next page. Alrighty, so what we have here. So four types of graphs and their purposes. So. Uh, you, you're familiar with all these graphs, I'm sure. You, I'm sure you've seen them. Maybe not, maybe not by name, but I know you've seen them. Uh, so the four types of graphs and the purpose: bar graphs uh, to emphasize uh, comparative amounts, right? And and they, you know, they look like bars. Pictographs to emphasize the topic being related, as well as quantity. So pictographs, you know, they, um, well, they they have correlating pictures to, to what we're talking about. Circle graphs. Uh, to help understand percents or part as a whole. Circle graphs are also called pie charts. Um, they're often used in, at least I think, they're often used in finances. And of course, line graphs, which, you know, like, kind of like uh, the stock market. So the property of graphs, they should be clearly labeled, they should be easy to read, and they should have an appropriate title. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right. So our first one is our bar graph. So it says reading a bar graph. Examine the bar graph and answer the questions given. Note that the scale on the left, right here, uh, is in sales, and the categories at the bottom are in months, are clearly labeled, and the graph itself has a title. Right? So we do indeed have the properties of graphs. Uh, the labels are, are clearly labeled, they're easy to read, and we have an appropriate title. The appropriate title is Monthly U.S. Book Sales. And apparently it looks like everybody has a, um, a New Year's resolution to read books in January. So... Looking at this, um, it's not abundantly difficult to, to answer these questions. Uh, that's the whole point of, of a graph, is to make things pretty darn easy for you. Uh, so it reads, what were the sales in February? Well, it says 1013, right? Well, 1013, 1013 what? Well, it's 1013 million, right? Because it sells in million. So it's a uh, million. Now, also at the same time, 13, 10, 13 million is just simply, you know, 1.013 billion. Um, that, something doesn't seem right about that million, does it? I don't know if, that, I don't know if that's any better, whatever. So during what month were sales the lowest? So we look here, we look for the smallest number, and it looks like it's going to be April. D, during what month were sales highest? Oh, that's an easy one. That is definitely going to be January. Um, D, what, what, what were sales during the highest sales month? Well, the sales during the highest sales month, well, the highest sales month was January. So it was going to be 2294. So 2,294 million sales during its highest month. E, what were the sales in June? Well, it looks like 1,095. And again, it, these, these are so easy to read, so easy to follow along with. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really about it. And then M, B, C, D, E, F. What were the amount of increase? Now, now, now we're gonna do something a little bit different where, where you know, we can't necessarily um, look at the graph. I mean, we, we will, but you know, I have to do a little bit of compu computation here. So what were the amount of increase, what was the amount of increase in sales between April and May? Well, uh, if we look at, between April, oh yeah, if we look at April and May, uh, sorry, I had something on the screen. Uh, May had 1,087 million and April had 918 million. Well, in order to figure that out, I just have to take, I'm gonna do this on my, on my calculator here, I'm just gonna have to take, and I'll write it down, I guess. Uh, well, we'll say 1,000, one zero, Eight seven minus nine 
uh, 118 and that's equal to uh, 169 so 169 let me move my toolbar here y'all I don't think you can see it but it's in my way if I go to try and write million it'll go crazy there so the difference is 169 million so that's example one easy peasy not not much to it um, but that's a bar chart or a bar graph next up we're gonna have a pictograph and we said that you know pictographs usually have a you know picture uh, relating to what we're talking about and of course we see this with a football Alrighty, so let's begin with A. Actually, let's not begin with A. Let's actually let's actually look at the uh, the chart real fast, right? So I mean, we, we we have everything clearly marked, right? We have we have the the the, the colleges as well as each football equating to twenty thousand people, and this is for the uh, national college football average attendance in twenty seventeen. So, of the colleges shown here, which college had the lowest average attendance? Well, of the ones shown there, it appears that North Carolina has the the lowest average attendance right so we're just gonna put um, NC which call it had the highest well looking here it looks it appears that Michigan does so Michigan we'll just abbreviate what was the average attendance for Nebraska so now we're gonna do a little bit of arithmetic so um, if we want to find the average attendance again each football is equal to 20,000 people so we say 20, 40, 60, 80, and it looks like half of one. So it's half of 20, well, that would be 10, right? So we would say, let's try that again. We'd say 20, 40, 60, 80, and then 90. So we'd say 90,000 people. Well, this, <laughs> this is a little bit long, huh? So Hanson Foods is supplying hot dogs to Clemson, Alabama, and Florida State football games on Saturday. If they are supplying one hot dog for each at uh, attendee based on 2017 average attendance, how many hot dogs will they supp be supplying? Okay, so Clemson, Alabama, Florida, and, and um, Florida, uh, I'm sorry, Clemson, Alabama, and Florida State. So uh, we're just going to have to do just some counting here, right? So here we go. Um, so we'll do one, two, three. We're just going to count whole, whole footballs right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so 12 whole football, so that would equal to uh, 240,000, right? And then one half, so 250,000. So that is, wow, that is incredible. You know, I've never actually thought about that. All, all the football games across the, the, the entire country, that's a lot of hot dogs. But anyways, that's how we did it. Two hundred and fifty thousand hot dogs. That is insane. Alrighty, so next up we have our pie graph or circle chart. Alright, so this reads examine the circle graph. This graph shows the percent of a household's annual income they plan to budget for various expenses. Suppose the household has an annual income of forty five thousand dollars. Use information in the graph to calculate how much money we budgeted for each expense. Hang on. What, what, what do we want to do here? Um, suppose the, oh, okay, has an annual income of 45000 Use information uh, in the graph to calculate how much money we budgeted for each expense. Okay, so in order to do this, we, we, we're just going to take the percent of each um, we're going to take the, the slice of each, uh, the percent on each slice here in the pie chart, and multiply it by 45,000. And I'm going to just go ahead and snip this because I know it's not going to fit nice and neatly on here if I write it. Uh, let's see. Let's make it a little bit larger, I guess. Okay, so what 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 we're doing here again? Uh, I might have I might have hand waved through that just a tad. I don't know. 
but it's, it was wanting us to um, suppose the household has an annual income of $45,000. It wants us to use this information in the graph. Now, this graph doesn't have things broken down into dollars. It has, thing, it has things broken down into percentages. And it was wanting us to break it down into dollars in the problem. And all you do is take the percentage, right? So housing is 25%. You do 0 0.25 and multiply by your, your, uh, your annual income. So you spend $11,250 on housing. And you can do that for all of it, right? So food is 20%. 20% 20 times 45,000 is 9,000. And all this will add up to 45,000. So all you do is simply multiply the percentage by you know your your um, household income, and then you'll you'll have the actual dollar amount. And lastly, we're going to be reading. I think it's lastly, reading a line graph. Maybe I should have snipped. Yeah, this is the last one. Okay, so we're going to snip the problems. Forgot to do that. All right. So uh, this problem reads, uh, examine the line graph. This graph shows the relationships between daily high and low temperatures. You can see that temperatures tended to rise during the week, but fell sharply on Saturday. Uh, note that the temperature scale on the left does not start at zero degrees Fahrenheit. There's a break indicated in the scale. Interesting. All right, so what was the lowest high temperature? So we, all we have to do is just simply look at the high temperature, which is the orange. And we're going to see, look for, you know, the, the smallest of it. And it looks like it's about, looks like about maybe about 66 degrees, right? 66 degrees what, Fahrenheit? Yes, we're in Fahrenheit. Oh, gosh, obviously, 66 degrees Celsius would be boiling, huh? Not boiling, but it'd be really hot. All right, so on what day did the lowest temperature occur? So it looks like the lowest temperature occurred, it looks like it was on Sunday, doesn't it? Uh, even though things got colder on uh, Saturday, it appears that this blue dot is lower than that blue dot. So we're going to say Sunday. What was the highest low temperature? Okay, so the highest low temperature looks like, you know, we're looking at the blue here. The highest of them occurs appears to occur on Friday, and it's about 70 degrees. So 70 degrees is the low. On what day did the highest temperature occur? Um, it's interesting because there's there's two days, right? It looks like uh, looks like Thursday and Friday they have the same high, and it's asking on what day. Well, that's just the way it is. It appears that. Um, Hmm. Well, yeah, we'll just say Thursday and Friday. Yeah, all right. And then E, find the mean difference between the daily high and low temperatures on Tuesday for the week shown. Okay, so... Uh, it's wanting us to find the the mean difference, all right? That, that all, so basically, it's wanting to just know the difference. Okay, so what is the 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 difference between the high and low on Tuesday? Well, it appears the high is about seventy, maybe about seventy six, and the low is about sixty six. Okay, so it looks like the mean difference is just going to be ten degrees, right? Just seventy six to sixty six. And again, like I said, that, that was it for the section, and so that concludes today's lecture.